Hi class, it is April Biss. I just wanted to show you around the classroom a little bit and do some housekeeping, um, some housekeeping stuff so that you guys know where to go. I know this is um, Thursday during week one. I have been super, super busy, so I apologize for not posting this sooner, but let's go ahead and look at your class. I do have three sections in this class, so you might notice a different number here but just bear with me, um, you know, this is section two. So if you're in section two, this is what you're seeing. Um, all the other sections should be pretty similar. And what you would do is just go up to your learning path to get into your class. On the left panel here, if you're not familiar with Brightspace, you have all of your categories. So in the beginning, you have your syllabus. So heck, go ahead and click on that. I went in and updated the syllabus because I noticed some incorrect information recently. So go ahead and read this again. Um, I updated the, uh, you know, a lot of the dates too. So this is where you'd find the syllabus and my contact information. I will not be doing live lectures each week for this course or this class, but I will have open office hours where you can come in if you have questions and that will be on Friday, so tomorrow, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And I'm, on, uh, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, so I'm Eastern Standard Time. So just kind of double check to see where you, you are and make sure those times uh, align if you need to uh, come in and ask any questions. But anyway, your student object objectives and you know all of the information regards to the classroom, required technology, grade scale, grading policies, course attendance, um, all this really, you know, information in here to do with the course is all in here that you can go in and check. Um, also on these pages, the overview starting on page six is a nice way to um, just see kind of like an outline of what to do. This might be something that you might wanna print out so it goes by each week, week one, week two, uh, week one is starting up here. And it gives you kind of every single topic that we're gonna be going over along with your assignments. And it's pretty lengthy because we have 11 weeks in this course. So don't get overwhelmed, just you know, go week by week. So that's where the syllabus is. The course schedule, if you click on this um, category, you can either view uh, upcoming or full schedule. If you do full schedule, it's gonna obviously show you, you know, the whole entire schedule. But if you choose upcoming, it's just gonna give you the next seven days of what to do. Um, and this is for this week of class, okay? Okay, so let's go back to learning path. If you click on learning path, it's gonna open up even more folders. This is the welcome uh, section here. So if you just click on that, just a little welcome from me. So if you miss this, I have a little intro in here and it's a lot of information, but it's just um, my intro and, you know, just kind of things to keep in mind uh, going forward in this class, along with just a quick breakdown, kind of what you saw in the syllabus, just a little bit more simplified of what we're gonna be doing each week. And then at the very bottom, is my contact information along with office hours and my personal Behance link. So you can actually click on that and you can go ahead and check out my work if you want. It's always nice to see what your instructors are doing. This is my Behance. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Okay, let's go back to your learning path here. Faculty bio, that's just, again, a little bit about me and my doggie here. This is Santino. He's a little wiener dog. You might hear him in our in the recordings every once in a while barking. I'm, I apologize ahead of time, <laughs> but this is um, my intro again, and again uh, my contact information. Always in more than one spot. Here's my teaching philosophy. So if you're interested in reading a little bit about you know, what you can expect of me and what I expect of you. You can definitely go ahead and check that out. And virtual office hours, again, listed here. 
And each week you should be provided a link as well. All right, course information and policies. Actually, let's go back to welcome. I think we're done there. Okay, course information and policies. You have your reading and assignments here. So you're gonna be reading the fundamentals of typography textbook and you're gonna be, it's gonna be found in the module by the same name to complete all reading. So see syllabus for reading assignments. The first five classes, uh, first five classes, I should say, have you reading a chapter each class from this textbook and then writing a freestyle paragraph on anything. Oh, I got some typos in there. You believe you're, uh, you got out of that reading. Actually, we're not gonna have discussions in this. So I really need to go in here and, and delete and edit this. I apologize ahead of time. Um, but it will be, you know, everything that you need in, it will be throughout your week module. So like your week one, week two, which we're gonna get to, will all be in there as well. Late work policy, you know, obviously that's a little blurb about that. 10% if you're over a week late. Um, you know, I always like to say I'm flexible. If you have something really, truly seriously going on um, and, and you're telling me about this ahead of time, I can try and work with you. Uh, so just kind of an FYI. All right, so this is resources. And if you click on learner, this is your resources. You have student Brightspace guide. So if you need help with um, certain things in Brightspace, you can check that out. Uh, Brightspace student um, questions, facts and questions. You can download uh, the bookshelf and then here's digital textbook tutorials as well. Questions for the professor, this is me. You can go ahead and ask any questions in here. I will be sent a little message, an alert, and I'll try to get back to you within 24 hours of you posting. Digital textbook. I had to delete the info base in here for some reason. Um, it was not working. So if you saw that initially in um, the last couple of days, I had to go in and delete that. I had talked to the assistant dean associate dean and she said it's not working i'm sorry this is where it, this is where it was the textbook companion site i actually had to delete that so that is deleted you do have a digital textbook here and it's an external um, textbook so you can definitely check that out All right. And then again, like I said, there's nothing here. So just kind of ignore that. Uh, week one is where we're at now. So I won't go through each week. I'm just going to show you week one uh, for now. So we can go and, uh, you know, I'll do little chunked recordings and I'll post it in announcements to go over what you're going to be doing this, you know, each week. Okay. So in the beginning, you know, office hours are set. Usually there's a link here you can find if you click on that, it's a hyperlink. So on Friday, if you need help, go ahead and come in here, click on that little link, and I will be sitting in um, Teams waiting for you. So, all right, um, each of these are lessons, but they're lessons in regards to uh, the overview, which I'll be going over here in a second. And then you have your the evolution of typography, which is your assignment this week. I had one student ask about uh, what exactly um, you should write about. And what these are are eras. So these are points in time of movements uh, within, you know, a certain time period that we're going to be uh, kind of explaining. Okay. So we're going to present the evolution of typography. So you're going to be either creating, and this is another question um, another student had, how much information do I have to put if I do a presentation where I'm doing a uh, oral presentation with a PowerPoint. So a PowerPoint is something that you present uh, to, you know, obviously it would be me, I would be the, the person that you would present it to. Um, so you wouldn't want a lot of copy on each page of a, of a PowerPoint. That's usually the, 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 um, <laughs> the biggest mistake most people make is by putting paragraphs and paragraphs of text on a PowerPoint slide. PowerPoints are just basically to show, uh, you know, highlighted copy, the most important copy out of what you're uh, lecturing about, what you're presenting about. So 
when you're, if you're setting up a PowerPoint and you're doing an oral presentation, just do bulleted points, very simple sentences. You can even show examples, imagery to go along with that, but don't paste in tons and tons of copy. And instead, I would suggest the copy that you do need, say you're citing the copy and then you're writing in your own words, put it in a, a Word document so that when you present it orally, you can read off of that and then present it. If you're not going to do that option, you can always do a Word document, which is just like a paper. So if you do a paper, you obviously will need more information. I had a student ask how much, you know, what's the length, what's the specifications. I would stick with APA format and I would say probably a paragraph or two for each era. And hopefully that will help you guys. Also, don't forget, once you are done, and include examples too, and don't forget references, you can use chapter one, pages 14 to 28 from the graphic design print production PDF attached. So you can actually use that. And that's right here. If you click on that, this is kind of what they're talking about. And the, this is kind of like a book. You can just scroll down. And they said uh, starts on chapter, uh, page six. So you would start here and you can see they're going through each of these eras that we just talked about. So there's um, let's see here. I think it said page six. Was it page six? Hold on. Or is it chapter six? Let me go and check that real quick. Okay, so it is pages, oh, 14 to 28. I did read that wrong. Okay, so you would go to page 14. And we are on page four, so you have to kind of scroll down a little bit. Okay, so it would start on this page. So go ahead and start on page uh, 14. It talks about um, topography. There we go. Some of these people are mentioned on that list. Punk, early postmodernism. And so on and so forth. So you can use that as a reference too, but definitely uh, read through that. You know, I'm kind of making you dizzy here because I'm scrolling like crazy, but okay. So um, let's go back to your lesson A intro to typography. All right. So let's go over this just a little bit. Let's talk about type. This is going to be exciting. So typography, uh, this is what this class is about. I love teaching typography. I've taught this uh, for many years. And it really is one of the key important components of a design. If you can design something with great uh, typography that works and it's effective, you really made it as a designer. Because I think that sometimes as designers, we think about all the other design elements that are a little bit, you know, maybe like imagery and color and all that, which is great. But typography sometimes takes a back seat. I know when I was going through my undergraduate studies, typography was, you know, we learned it, but it wasn't something that we really focused on. And that was, you know, kind of a bummer, but um, I didn't realize that until I got into the real world and started working as a designer, how important typography really is and how you can just use typography to really visually speak to somebody and verbally speak. Uh, and it really has a more uh, persuasive uh, component to it than maybe even just imagery does. Um, and then when I went to get my master's degree at SCAD, that I went through typography courses there where it was very, very focused, very intense, and made me see it in a different perspective and um, really made me dive into all the very details about, you know, details about typography, where it was just, I was really kind of experimenting with it a little bit more and more, you know, aware of that when I was going forward with projects. So what is typography? 
I, you know, most of you guys know what typography is, but let's talk about this in actual terminology. So typography is the art of selecting and arranging letter forms in a design. Okay, so, you know, you're really, it's very simply said, but there's so many different intricacies about typography down to the typeface itself. You know, a lot of the typefaces have different connotations that uh, are, you know, are come along with that specific typeface. Um, you know, there's different eras those typefaces came from that, you know, if you are using it, you want to make sure you're using it appropriately. Because you don't, if you don't understand about that typeface and the history of that typeface, it may look aesthetically pleasing, but it may not work because it may maybe make it look older, give it a different connotation that you really wanted to. So educating yourself on typography, the different typefaces, even the anatomy of type uh, of actual letter forms is something that every designer needs to learn. Um, it's almost like when you're a doctor and you have to learn parts of the body, the anatomy of the body, and you have to know all the terminology so that you can speak to other doctors and other, um, and also patients about that anatomy. The same is true for designers. You know, we are using typography, so we need to know the anatomy of letter forms in order to use it properly. So what is lettering? The art, the art of drawing letters. So a specific combination of letter forms crafted for a single use and purpose as opposed to using previously designed letters as components, as with typography. Often letter, lettering is hand-drawn with pens, graphite, or brushes, although some people start their work directly in Adobe Illustrator. So there's some really cool, uh, even just hand uh, done typography that is out there. I'm sure if you uh, belong to some typography, typeface type blogs and, you know, Pinterest, you probably have seen a lot of inspirational type um, hand drawn and even on the computer. Here's one example here. You know, it's, a, it's definitely a truly an art form in itself. You know, here's lettering, custom lettering. All right. So you probably have heard both of these terms, typeface and font. Um, and you probably think, oh, they mean the same thing. Well, they actually don't. They're, they go hand in hand, but they actually don't. Uh, you use a specific word in uh, for a specific reason when you're communicating, say to another designer or even a printer. Um, what is the difference? Do you know the differences between typeface versus font? Ask yourself that. We're gonna go and look at this in detail. So typeface is the artistic design of characters. It is the way the type actually looks, okay? When you talk about font, when type made the leap to the digital realm, a font became the digital file that renders the typeface in all sizes. So that's the important thing. So, you know, you might hear a client, say you're working with a client and they say, oh, I really like that font, you know, Helvetica. You know, a designer will probably obviously know that what they meant was typeface. <laughs> And uh, a font is really kind of, you know, it's, it's a different way of, of communicating the font. So the font is like the, the typeface in a whole. So you might have a typeface that has font families too, like say Helvetica New has like bold and bold italic and has a whole font family. So in that case, you can say this font rather than typeface, if that makes sense. All right, so I know I kind of talked about the anatomy of the letter and I'm posting, I actually posted that today, the anatomy of uh, letter form. So hopefully you can look at that in announcements and see all the terminology that goes with that. So let's take a look at character. The individual letters is what a character is called. So if somebody says, I want to move this character, that's what they mean. So individual letters, numbers and punctuation used when types, uh, setting type. Uppercase is obviously the capital letters of the alphabet and lowercase are the small letters of the alphabet. Just going over some terminology here. All right, so letter form, 
so this is part of the anatomy of uh, typeface. Uh, it's called, there's something that's called an ascender, and that's any part in a lowercase letter that extends above the X site. So you can see this little D and the L are going above the X site there, and that's called the ascender. So if you were communicating to someone, say if this was a logo, like a letter mark, and you were talking to another designer and you were talking about the D and the L, maybe meeting up together in some way, you would say, you know, the A sender of the D and the L could extend together in, in a way that we could revise this. There's also a D sender, which is any part in a lowercase letter that uh, extends below the baseline. So that little G part under that baseline. The baseline is what that sits on. So this little baseline, you have the ascender here and the descender pointing out of each characteristic of, and every font's different, but that's kind of what that's uh, described as. You also have another thing called counters, and that's areas of negative space. So that's white space formed by straight or rounded strokes. So closed counters are found in uh, the letter lowercase a, b, d, e, g, o, p, q, capital A, B, D, O, P, Q, R, and open counters are in lowercase a, c, e, f, h, m, n, r, s, t, and u. So we have counters and closed counters. Uh, we have serifs. If you've heard of uh, classification of typefaces that are called serifs, say if I say find a serif font, that means if there's a small line attached to the end of a stroke in a letter. So a good example would be Times New Roman is a serif font. I call them like little feet, little feet. All right, um, here's a really nice example showing you serif. So the little, little feet, the little things that hang over, serif characters, you have the descender, you have the X height, which is the lower letter case height lower lowercase letter form height. There's um, a thing called the mean line, which is where that lowercase letter hits. And then the baseline, which is how it lands on that um, bottom line there. All right, so there's your ascender and your counter. And then this is CN serif. So sans means without. So basically it's without the little feet. Okay, so cap height is the imaginary line that runs across the top of the capital letters and A centers in a line of type. So you can see the cap heights on the very top. The baseline is an imaginary line on which the characters sit. So a lot of the times I'll say something like, I'll give a critique to a student and I'll say, make sure all of your baselines align. Say if they're working on a magazine layout, that's what I'm referring to. Okay, the mean line is the imaginary line that runs across the top of most lowercase letters. You can see that kind of on the middle there. And the X height is the height of the body or main element of lowercase letter forms, which fall between the mean line and the baseline, typically exemplified by the letter X. So why is the X height important? The relationship of the X height to the body defines the perceived type size. A typeface with a large X height looks much bigger than a typeface with a small X height at the same size. So it's really important that you understand that because sometimes you may not want some certain uh, typefaces look larger when you put them in body, you know, say uh, body copy boxes. And that's because the X heights may be a little bit bigger. So it might be harder to read. So that's just something to keep in mind. Why is typography so important? Let's take a look at that. We kind of talked about that a little bit too earlier in our uh, the lecture here. Today's graphic designers work with large ranges of media, whether the design is for print, television, film, web, or mobile devices. Good typography is the foundation of good design. And that's so true. So why else is typography uh, so important? Communication, you know, many times we walk, we don't even realize this, maybe we do. Say in the airport, you know, we have these signs um, in the airport, or if you're driving down the highway, we have specific typefaces that are used 
for the best readability so that we are able to quickly, uh, you know, go about our way and know where to go. Um, this is called wayfinding. So communication is huge. We want to know where we're going. If we don't have signage uh, and it's not readable, then we have a problem. Also for organization, you know, we're, we are designers. We have to be the visual orga organizers. We have to, to set up our hierarchy so that the viewer knows where to look first, second, third, fourth, so that they're not confused and, you know, uh, they don't get the information the way that they should. So organization is important, especially on a website too, because there's so much information on a website. Um, aesthetics, you know, just, you know, being aesthetically pleasing is something that's really important because, you know, as brands and as companies and organizations, we really want to aesthetically have things set properly um, in terms of typography because you want it to be aesthetically pleasing. You want it to look like part of your brand. You want it to be easily accessible. Um, so if you have, say, typefaces that aren't really appropriate for your brand, it would, you know, it would definitely take away from it. And here you go. If done poorly, you may end up like this. <laughs> so as designers, you know, anyone who has access to the apps that we do as designers don't necessarily understand some of these concepts. And that's why you guys are here to learn this. So we're, we're learning uh, the good and the bad of design. So learning typography um, is part of that process. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up here and let's go back to, let's see, let's get out of this presentation mode. That is intro to typography. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out. And we have this really cool uh, little presentation about patterns. Ooh, that gets your eyes going, right? Good morning to you. So let's talk about patterns. So patterns is the repetition of the elements of art and design. So it's line, shape, texture, space, size, and color, also known as rhythm. So you have a really nice pattern happening here in these examples. So by composing a single element in different schemes, the designer can create endless variations and patterns. The secret to success in creating patterns is the production of a broad general effect by the repetition of a few simple elements. So we have Marianne Banches, and this is an example here. Uh, we did these studies in my undergrad where we actually had to create these um, patterns using paper and kind of like a three-dimensional type of a look. But here's some real-world printing examples. This is kind of almost like um, wrapping paper with a logo. You can see patterns, say, on different uh, magazine covers. Kind of gives a nice effect there. All right, we have some of these examples uh, from certain designers. So we have patterns, this would be uh, I think this is wallpaper, just patterns, illustrations, here's like packaging, wallpaper, shoes. So, you know, you could be a designer that actually is an illustrator that could create these patterns. So turning elements on an angle or changing their size adds depth and motion to patterns. So something to think about. Um, going forward with your projects going in the, you know, in the weeks to come here. So that's patterns. And the last part of this, oh, let me go back here. Is Illustrator Basic. So let's take a look at this. If you're not familiar with Illustrator, it's okay. We're just learning the basics here. Illustrator is a vector-based program. That means it does not deal with pixels like Photoshop does. Photoshop is a raster-based application that is, in the, is uh, dependent on, on pixels to create images. 
Adobe is the opposite. It's a vector-based program. So it uses like uh, shapes and lines to create, uh, it's mathematical. I can't give you the, it's a little bit too complicated for me to explain, but it's, this, it's an app that it, no matter what you create in there, uh, say a logo, if you blow it up to billboard size, it's still gonna be very clear and crisp because it's not depending on pixels um, to create the, uh, the design elements. So it's a vector-based drawing program. Again, not pixel-based. So it's resolution independent. And that's why we use that as designers for logos because that's where we go. Everybody should go to Illustrator first or a vector-based program um, to create logos because you don't want that pixelization or you know because it's going to degrade the brand or design elements okay so i'm going to kind of show you a couple of these things so you, we're going to look at the menu bar control panel workspace panel system tools panel document window um, all of this is broken in down here i won't you know list these i'll just show you them in a second here you have your selection tools and i'll show you those as well um, grouping objects, shift key, add to selection, menu, all that good stuff. Um, most of you guys probably went in and, and played around with this. Here's your character panel. This is how you change your typeface. Um, and I'll show you how to use the type tool as well. This is a little bit more complicated, type on a path. Um, create outlines. All right, so there's all kinds of stuff in here. Okay, this is objectives here. So this, let me go back here. Well, it says week three. Okay, this is aligning. Okay, yep. All right, so this is a great resource. You could always go back here and look at. I'm just gonna go over a few things. Um, today in class just to kind of over do a look just a little introduction if you're not real used to using illustrator i think a lot of the programs in adobe like photoshop and InDesign, they're all very they, the platforms are pretty similar in regards to uh, how they look uh, obviously they do different things and we use them in different ways Okay, so let me go up here. Let me create a new document. So file new. I'm just going to create an eight and a half by eleven. So when you open Illustrator, you may notice that you have maybe panels that are all over the place. Uh, on the upper right hand corner here, there is a switch workspace button. It looks like a little folder here. If you click on that. It's going to show you probably not these because I actually created these, but it's going to show you automation essentials. These are all just pref preferences on how your artboard looks, how your, um, you know, all the panels that are on there, what you're going to use it for. So let's say typography. We're in typography. Let's choose that one and watch my panels change based on my selection. See how it all changed to now I'm just focused on typography. Now, if I wanted to change that to say layout, say I'm doing like a magazine layout, it's going to bring up panels that I would probably use frequently for laying out and so on and so forth, painting. And if you ever need to reset this, all you have to do is go to reset whatever you're on. You know, say if you're pulling panels out, you know, like this, you can, these are all kind of tabbed in and say you're like, oh, the messy workspace. Go back up here, say reset. It's going to put them all back in place. And these are panels, okay? This is your workspace. And I don't know if you can see up here. Your menu bar is up here. I don't think it's sharing right now. But you have Illustrator, File, Edit, Object, Type, Select, Effect, View, Window, and Help. If you choose Illustrator, you can choose Preferences and make sure that you're in the right measurement. So I like to say go to preferences units and make sure you're in inches. You can always change this in properties as well. Properties is a great channel uh, panel to have up. Okay, so that's your menu bar. And this is your toolbar toolbox panel. And there's like a little double arrow here, you can click and make it 
your preference on what shape you would like to have it on there. Some designers like to have more space on their artboard. I'm sorry, workspace, um, so that you know their tools aren't in the way. So that's a preference here. This is your artboard, and this is eight and a half by eleven. This is where, if you were to send this to print, it would trim right where this white hits the gray. Um, in your toolbox, you have selection tools. We just talked about that in the overview. So the black arrow is your selection tool. And what that does is it allows me to select, you know, whether it be a shape or it be text. It allows me to pull it around. It may even allow me to rotate it. I can even delete it, hit my keyboard. So that just allows you to adjust the shape or text as far as like positioning. Um, but that's basically a selection tool. Now, the white arrow is the, <clears throat> is the direct selection tool. If you hover over it with your cursor, um, it will intuitively tell you what these tools are called. Okay, so the white arrow works a little different. You actually have to click on the line to open up. These are called vectors, okay? And the vectors are these little square points. You might have to, uh, or they're anchors, sorry, um, but they're vector points. They're anchors. So if you zoom in, you'll see that these, if you click on the line, not the actual anchor, it's going to have these open. So what that means is you can take your uh, direct selection tool and click right on that to select just that anchor and adjust it. Okay, so that adjusts the anchor points individually, but you have to make sure that you, you know, it's weird. It's like you have to click on the line first. You can't click on the anchor. Well, you can click on the anchor anchor first too, um, but you, that's kind of like the easier way to, to learn how to do that. So that is the white arrow. In order to delete, you have to take the selection tool and delete. This is a selection tool too. Both of these are selection tools. The next thing is your pen tool. This takes a little while to get used to, but you can do kind of some cool stuff with the pen tool. And you just have to kind of know how to work with it. You have these berserk curves, which when you click and hold down that click and drag your cursor out, it creates these little handles where you can take your direct selection tool and you can actually, you know, shift these handles, handlebars in a way so that you're finessing the line a little bit. And again, this takes a little bit of practice, but that's what these do. So it's a handle. You have more, if there's like a little, um, arrow next to the button here. It just means if you hold that down, you'll see more tools available. Okay. So that is the, uh, that's the pen tool. You have the shapes tool. So if you click and hold that click, you'll see the rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star tool. You can click on any of these and, you know, pull them out, play around with them. The line segment tool is just what it is. You know, can we create lines as well? Um, this is the, if you ever wanted to draw something and wanted to take out a point and anchor, you can click on the little negative anchor and it could take that out. It's kind of cool. Um, you have the brush tool and this, I don't really use that often, but you know, obviously this is the brush tool and anytime you change your, you know, change to a new tool, notice how the, uh, up here on the top menu bar or below the menu bar, it's the selection bar, how it changes to that preference. So you can actually go up here and change, say the, the type of line, the roundness of it, the thickness, all that good stuff. You can even make it thicker. I'm just clicking and dragging. So just notice when I click on, say the pen tool, let's delete this here. Let's do, let's do the uh, shapes tool. Notice how up here it changes a little bit too. So you can kind of do different things to that. Okay, your type tool, which is the most important because this is a typography class. The type tool is right here, the letter T. And these all have shortcut keys too. So you can see the little T in parentheses. That just means if you hit T on your keyboard, it'll go right to that tool as well. So it's like a shortcut. Now type can be set in two ways. You can either click it one time on the board and type, 
or you can actually click and drag and set type this way as well. Now it's going to fill it with this. It's called lorem ipsum, which is like Greek type, but you can go in here and start typing in this box so that you can see how the line lines work. Okay. So what this is basically doing is when you're just clicking and typing one time on the board, it's just typing out one line. If you're clicking and dragging before you type in there, it's creating a text box. These are always great for, say, if you needed a space where it was just a certain width, like an ad or a magazine ad, and you have columns of type, that's, that's what works good for that. Now, anytime you want to adjust the type, you will need to select the type tool again. And you can click and drag, you can double click, you can go edit, select all, I'm sorry, uh, select, select all. And you can go in and to your character panel. Now, if you don't have your character panel, up, go up to window, type character. And this is where you'll see your fonts here. So you can change your fonts, you can change the, the um, size. This is the point size. This is the letting. Now, again, if you hover over these, each of these examples, it'll tell you. So the letting is the space in between your line spaces. You can go like real tight or you can go real loose um, with your letting. You can do auto, it'll set it for you how it believes the balance is best. You have your tracking, that's the space in between each letter. So you can go real tight or real loose. Usually it's good to keep it in you know, a balanced look for, readability and legibility purposes. Everything else down here is just a lot of extra stuff that you really don't need to learn right now, just kind of a couple of things to, to see. And again, you can change stuff up here too. You can see how this character panel emulates what's up here. So there's always a couple of ways to do, you know, one task. Paragraph is just, and that, that's another paragraph panel. You can see here and here, if you don't see it's under window type paragraph. This is so you can set your type, say, in a different alignment. This is left alignment, center, and right. So that's how you would do that. And then you can always go in here and just, you know, select maybe one word and do more bold so that, you know, you just need your type tool to do that. Okay, that's all I'm going to cover right now because I feel like, you know, you guys are getting started. I'll, I'll get into the more um, nitty gritty stuff later. Uh, if you, you know, obviously if you think this is really easy because you know Illustrator, just bear with me here. A lot of you guys are just starting out. So I wanted to make sure I just went over some of the basics there. Okay. All right. So now that we're here, let's go back to your lecture slides. So if you have any questions, you know, you can always look back on this as a, as a reference to and that's again, lesson one C. Okay. All right. So then last but not least, the evolution of typography. So what you're going to do is you're going to present the evolution of typography. You're going to explain the changes in typography for each of the following eras. The arts and crafts movement, the Deutscher Workbund, Bauhaus, Dada, international type, uh, type, typographic style, excuse me, late modern New York style and postmodern. This assignment can be an oral presentation, a Word document or PowerPoint. Please use images and bullet points. Make sure you, you include examples of typefaces and influential typographers in the visual presentation. Record or upload the presentation for next week. Use chapters, chapter one, so that's pages 14 and 28 from the graphic design and print production PDF attached, which is right here. So I would start, you can always go into, um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Go to online library. So your academic resources, if you go to your online library, you can also access resources here. If you don't want to go an external resource online or if you have a book, oops, I just hit something by the way, sorry. All right, so let's say you want to look up, um, let's look up Dada. I don't know if I clicked on the right thing here, hold on. 
Okay, so when I clicked on, when I search for data, it comes up with some uh, essays and some, some stuff in here, which are digital, digitally provided. So you can go in here and check this out. Um, you know, they have chapters. So there's a ton of information here on your online. Um, there's full text, you can look at it too, uh, that you can you look up here uh, as far as the online resource, okay? Or you can obviously use just your online resources on like a Google search. I just would not use Wikipedia as a resource, you know, just try to get something that's creditable. Um, when you do, make sure you, you, cite, you uh, cite source it in the text itself and also um, cite it at the end as a reference. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty much it uh, as far as your week one. Hopefully you guys will, if you have any questions, I'll be in tomorrow at one o'clock for the office hours. So go, come on in if you have questions. It's pretty simple and to the point, it's just finding out this information. And hopefully this lecture really helped you kind of help clarify certain things. All right, I'm gonna post this to announcements. Everybody have a great day.